Hello everyone, it is Jazz here. Today I am doing the December book excerpt reading. I didn't do a vote this time because I wanted to do a Christmassy scene and I know that Little Women opens with a fabulous Christmas set scene so I decided to read an excerpt from this. Most of you probably know what Little Women is about already but it's basically about the four March sisters and them living their lives as little women. It, it doesn't take much explanation, but you really don't need much explanation for this scene because it's the opening of the book. So let's go for it. Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents, grumbled Joe lying on the rug. It's so dreadful to be poor sighed Meg, looking down at her old dress. I don't think it's fair that some girls have plenty of pretty things and other girls nothing at all, added little Amy with an injured sniff. We've got father and mother and each other, said Bess contentedly from her corner. The four young faces on which the firelight shone brightened at the cheerful words, but darkened again as Joe said sadly, we haven't got father and shall not have him for a long time. She didn't say, perhaps never, but each silently added it, thinking of father far away where the fighting was. Nobody spoke for a minute. Then Meg said in an altered tone, you know the reason mother proposed not having any presents this Christmas was because it's going to be a hard winter for everyone. And she thinks we ought not spend money for pleasure when our men are suffering so in the army. We can't do much, but we can make our little sacrifices and ought to do it gladly. But I'm afraid I don't. And Meg shook her head as she thought regretfully of all the pretty things she wanted. But I don't think the little we should spend would do any good. We've each got a dollar and the army wouldn't be much helped by our giving that. I agree not to expect anything from mother or you, but I do want to buy Undine and Sintram for myself. I've wanted it for so long, said Joe, who was a bookworm. I plan to spend mine on new music, said Beth with a little sigh, which no one heard but the hearth brush and the kettle holder. I shall get a nice box of Faber Strong pencils. I really need them said Amy decidedly. Mother didn't say anything about our money, and she won't wish us to give up everything. Let's each buy what we want and have a little fun. I'm sure we work hard enough to earn it, cried Jo, examining the heels of her boots in a gentlemanly manner. I know I do, teaching those tiresome children all day when I'm longing to enjoy myself at home. You don't have such a hard time as I do. How would you like to be shut up for hours with a fussy old lady who keeps you trotting, is never satisfied, and worries you until you're ready to fly out the window or cry? It's naughty to fret, but I do think washing dishes and keeping things tidy the worst work in the world. It makes me cross, and my hands get so stiff I can't practice well at all. And Beth looked at her rough hands with a sigh that anyone could hear that time. I don't believe any of you suffer as I do, for you don't have to go to school with impertinent girls who plague you if you don't know your lessons and make fun of your dresses and label your father if he isn't rich and insult you when your nose isn't nice. If you mean libel, I'd say so and not talk about labels as if Papa was a pickle bottle. <laughs> I know what I mean, and you needn't be so satirical about it. It's proper to use good words and improve your vocabulary. Don't peck at one another, children. Don't you wish we had the money Papa lost when we were little, Joe? Dear me, how happy and good we'd be if we had no worries, said Meg, who could remember better times. You said the other day that you thought we were a good deal happier than the king children, for they were fighting and fretting all the time in spite of their money. So I did, Beth. Well, I think we are, for though we do have to work, we make fun for ourselves and are a pretty jolly set, as Joe would say. Joe does use such slang words, observed Amy with a reproving look at the long figure stretched on the rug. Jo immediately sat up, put her hands in her apron pockets, and began to whistle. 
Don't, Joe. It's so boyish. That's why I do it. I detest rude and ladylike girls. I hate affected nimny pimny chits. Birds in their little nest agree. Sing Beth, the peacemaker, with such a funny face that both sharp voices softened to laugh and the pecking ended for that time. Really, girls, you are both to be blamed, said Meg, beginning to lecture in her elder sisterly fashion. You are old enough to leave off boyish tricks and behave better, Josephine. It didn't matter so much when you were little, but now you are so tall and turn up your hair, and you should remember that you are a young lady. I'm not, and if Turning up my hair makes me one. I'll wear it in two tails till I'm 20. I hate to think I've got to grow up and be Miss March and wear gowns and look prim as a china aster. It's bad enough to be a girl. When I like boys' games and work and manners, I can't get over my disappointment at not being a boy. It's worse than ever now. When I'm dying to go and fight with father, and all I can do is sit at home and knit like a pokey old woman. And Joe shook the blue army sock till the needles rattled like castanets, and her ball bounded across the room. Poor Joe. It's too bad, but it can't be helped. So you must try to be contented with making your name boyish and playing brother to us girls, said Beth stroking the rough head at her knee with a hand that all the dishwashing and dusting in the world could not make ungentle in its touch. As for you, Amy, you are far too particular and prim. Your airs are funny now, but you'll grow up an affected little goose if you aren't careful. I like your nice manners and refined ways when you don't try to be elegant. But your absurd words are as bad as Joe's slang. If Joe is a tomboy, and Amy a goose. What am I, please? Asked Beth, ready to share the lecture. You're a dear, and nothing else, answered Meg warmly. And no one contradicted her, for the mouse was the pet of the family. That was my excerpt reading of Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have left the link to this fabulous annotated edition in the description, as well as the normal book if annotation is not your vibe. So if you want to check this book out, please do check that out. And it is a super sweet, yet also occasionally deep kind of book. It warms your heart though. So definitely give it a read if you've never read it before. And that is it for today. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you all soon. Bye. The words. Why? Why? This is such a bad stuttering. I'm having such a bad start. Maybe that means that it's going to be good as it goes on. You know the reason Mother proposed not having a Christmas... Not having a Christmas present. <laughs> not having a Christmas this present. Her last one. Oh, I'm shedding a little bit. Look at me. I'm molting. <laughs> but I do think washing dishes... Oh, my dog's there. Oh, my dog's got me. Okay. Good heavens. Big girls who plague you if you don't know your lessons and laugh at your dresses and <sighs> shoot. <laughs> shoot. I don't like that one because my lips popped and I hate that. It's the bane of the editor's existence. Birds in their little nests agree. No. That's like that, not that. That was kind of creepy. <laughs> that was kind of creepy. <laughs> Birds in their little nests agree. No. I'm t I'm channeling Snow White. Cool. <laughs> and Meg shook her head as she thought regret. We shut up with a fussy. <laughs> Still not good. That's like really careful that you almost don't. I chit. <laughs> chit. You will have to warn me if it doesn't sound like chit, but it worries. It worries indeed. I was reading it last night thinking, oh, that could be sound go right.